Oops, I did not mean to hit record yet. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it live. Uh, well, this is my review of Knives Out, the Knives Out sequel, Glass Onion. I watched this like the day after it premiered on Netflix. So this is very, very late. But I, uh, I, I had like a nasty cough over New Year's. So I didn't have the chance to record anything that I wanted to record for New Year's. I, I streamed yesterday, but before that I had, I had did, went like, like a three weeks, a month without recording anything, anything at all. Cause I was just like, I'm still, sinuses are still a little, so if I like stop, I'm gonna, st forgive me if I like get up to grab a water bottle. Cause my, 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 my throat is still like, there's still a bit of a gunk in there. But anyway, uh, the reviews need to get done. You need to know my opinions on Glass Onion a month after everyone has already stopped talking about it. Uh, I think I, I, I mix, I thought it was really good. I don't know if I, I like it as much as the original Knives Out for different reasons. Uh, I don't think it's, I, I think in terms of a mystery structure, in terms of the structure of the mystery and the, like, the, the intrigue and then payoff of said intrigue, like the description at the end of what actually happened, the first one is the first one is a more satisfying mystery story. It's a bit more of a traditional murder mystery, which makes sense because it's these characters with old money, whereas this one has these very new money kind of these very new money Elon Musk type rich people rather than the like old money like aristocratic family that was the focus of the first one. This one has much more of a focus on the modern billionaire, the modern mega rich. Uh, and so it's a little, it's like the characters are not as smart. Uh, the, the murder, the mystery of what, ac the reveal of what actually happened is not as, it's not as complex, not the movie, but the mystery part of it is not as complex. A lot of the mystery in the movie is in guessing when the mystery is going to start. Like, who's going to be the victim? Who, who, like, wh like, what even is the crime? A lot of it is in, fi a lot of, a lot of the movie is in figuring that out. Like, the first movie, somewhat, for the first movie, Guy is dead in, like, ten minutes. This movie, Guy dying is, like, the end of the first act. There's a whole act of all these characters going to the island and getting the setup. And I think that's where Glass Onion really shines. It's having, it's really funny. I think it's easily funnier than the first one. Uh, like the, the characters are just like, it's, it's very, it's got some very like topical satire. Like there, there's something I did not expect from this. There's COVID satire. COVID is a plot point. Like this canonically takes place during the COVID quarantine 2020 era. And I guess it's been long enough now, but that doesn't feel cringe. It's like actually funny what they do with it. Like what characters care about the pandemic? What characters don't care about the pandemic? How the, the, the writing is so sharp that, and it's only gotten more sharp. The, the main, the, basically the premise of this one is a bunch of characters get brought to this rich dude's island for a murder mystery party and Benoit Blanc is one of the people there uh and the dude who brings them all there is very Elon musk -y. uh he's not like specifically a tech guy he's not meant to be an Elon Musk parody specifically but the satire around him has aged very very well over the last like two years since this movie was written. Because I think, I think Ryan Johnson wrote it in quarantine. That's the vibe it did. I mean, it's set during that time period. Uh, Benoit Blanc plays a certain, a certain video game in it. Uh, no spoilers yet, but that was a, that was a good scene. There's a lot of good scenes in this. So this is just a fun, a lot of fun cameos. Uh, but also still like a good, but also still a good mystery plot, and with a lot of twisty and turnsy, a lot of twisty turnsy, where you don't really know what's happening, 
you, it's almost more twisty turny than the first one. You, the first one is, the first movie structure is first act regular murder mystery, nothing weird about it. Second act. Oh wait, they just gave us all the answers. So what is there still to discover? Now it's not. Is it even a murder mystery anymore? And then third act. Oh okay, here's the second layer of what actually happened. This movie structure is first act just really devoted to introducing you to all these characters, kind of Clue-esque, uh, where there's just, like, a bunch of weird, quirky, rich people characters, and they're all at a murder mystery party together, and you're just getting to know all of them and waiting for the, waiting for the sh other shoe to, other shoe to drop? Is that the word? I, I feel like I'm saying that expression wrong. You know what I mean, uh, of, like, okay, when's the person gonna die? When's he gonna be murdered? And I'm saying he... But that's not, I'm, uh, that is in no, I'm, that is not meant to reference who actually dies. Because even, even the aspect of who actually dies is something of a, uh, mystery builder. Of like, like, who is dead, who is not, who, who's mis whose murder mystery are we really solving? Uh, and that, I think, is where the, the mystery is at its strength. The, Resolution of Benoit Blanc explaining what happens is kind of, without giving spoilers, it's purposefully unsatisfying. Uh, now that being said, the the last when I reviewed Knives Out, the first one, I did not spoil. I did a no spoilers review. I know I did a no spoilers review because I looked through my videos to make sure I actually did review the first Knives Out, and the title was Knives Out review, no spoilers. Uh, so, for this second one, I, I do feel the need to talk about spoilers, uh, and I, we're going to segue into that now, but story short, if you liked the first Knives Out, you will likely like the second one. It's another fun mystery, it's got a lot of fun characters, lots of great, a star-studded cast, you know, all the strengths the first one had, really just with a little more focus on satire comedy kind of stuff. Not not in a way where it's like detracting from the mystery, like, you know, like the Marvel critic the Marvel critique, but in a way where it's just like, this is a more fun movie than the first one. I, the first one is a better mystery, but this one is more fun. And that's that if you want my succinct opinion on it, that's where it is. Stop here. I'm gonna talk about spoilers now. Part of those spoilers are what makes the movie more fun. And for me, the the, the the resolution, not Benoit Blanc explaining what happened, but the aftermath of that is what makes this movie fun. I love, okay, since we're in spoilers, I can talk about it now. I love that he, he's, Ryan Johnson is so good at subverting expectations. I mean, that's what he did for The Last Jedi, but it works, it works undeniably well in a murder mystery and isn't go, it shouldn't alienate anyone because that's literally the, he just he knows he has such a knowledge of what the tropes are and how to subvert them he's like oh yes everyone watching this is going to assume that edward norton's character the rich guy who invites them to the island is going to die so then and 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 you also assume okay so this murder mystery he's going to he's planning is turning into a real is going to turn into a real murder mystery no Benoit Blanc solves Edward Norton's planned murder mystery in, like, immediately, before he's even started it, and then is like, okay, well, now that I've dealt with that, I'm gonna make sure you don't get murdered. Uh, Benoit Blanc voices, I, I can't do, doing that voice, it's just doing a lot oh god. Um, anyway, uh, so then the rest of the movie becomes, okay, well, now what's going to happen? Now when's the murder going to happen? And then when the murder finally does happen, it's not uh, Edward Norton's character. But it seems like they meant to murder Edward Norton's character. So it is it is a good mystery with a lot of twisty turn twist. Why do I keep saying twisty turnsy? But then the fact that it actually does end up being Edward Norton's character and the fact that Janelle Monet's character is like, not who she seems, and we're actually solving a different murder mystery that happened before the movie start. This is one of those murder mysteries where the structure is like, here's a first act, then here's a second act of what actually happened during that first act, but somehow in a way that doesn't feel 
cheap, like the movie is hiding information from you. Instead, it's just showing things from different characters' perspectives. Uh, so you spend all I you spend so much of the first act being like, okay, like almost waiting for something to happen, but not in a bad way because again, the characters are so fun that it, you you're in it. Uh, and then the second act you see going, oh, things have been happening all along. I we just didn't know. And then the third act, which is just the balls, the glass onion building explosion sequence is so good. The fact that the villain is like, yeah, you can't prove I did anything. And all these people are too in my pocket, in my money to like testify against me. Like, I love that he's dumb and his murder plot is dumb, but he has, he potentially gets away with it just because he's rich. Like, basically. What, what excellent eat the rich commentary from this movie this year. Uh, but the, and so then the way that they, the way that they win him over, or not the way that they win him over, but the whole, the whole blowing up the glass onion and then destroying the Mona Lisa sequence, it's just, I, I don't even need to talk about it. If you've seen the movie, it's just a freaking awesome, cathartic, satisfying ending sequence. It's like they took, they took the brief moment in Knives Out, the first one, where Chris Evans' character pulls the knife out and tries to stab Ana de Armas, and then it's a prop knife and he fails. They took that, that burst of action that shows up at the end of that movie, and turn it into a whole sequence, a whole third act sequence of of incredibly earned action that is also very, very fun. Um, and just like, just seeing his character get ruined because he was an idiot and decided to keep the Mona Lisa in a room where it could be damaged. Ugh, so satisfying. I think the second movie I love to. I will probably rewatch it at some point because I, I, I think Glass Onion it might be more rewatchable than the first Knives Out. I don't know. We'll see. But it's like the first Knives Out. After watching that one two or three times, I kind of am like, like I don't. I that's a great movie, but I don't need to rewatch it anymore because it does have a much more. It's not as exciting, uh, which is fine. Uh, again, it's going for something different. I don't really think one movie is better than the other, but but if you're but if you like if you like your movies a little more exciting and a little less mystery, Glass Onion will be the one you prefer because it is. And even just talk, I didn't think talking about it a month after watching it or three weeks after watching it, I'd have, I I'd, I'd be so still so excited about it. But it's still it's just such a fun movie, just such a fun movie. Uh, the first one is a, just a really sol sad, solid murder mystery. This one is a really fun murder mystery. Again, the mystery is not quite as complex, but it's still complex enough to carry all the just, oh, I, now I'm, I, Ryan Johnson, make more of these. I know he's going to, and I hope they're all this fun. It's just fun to see like, okay, what idea is he going to come up with this time? He is single-handedly making the genre of murder mystery shine. Absolute madman. All right. Uh, I think that's about all I have to say about this movie. Uh, I have another review I'm about to record as well for something else that I watched in the last, like, three weeks of non-uploads. Arrivederci!